Today we're going to talk about my five tips for actually waking up and making it to sunrise as a landscape photographer. I don't know about you, but one of the hardest things I consider about being a landscape photographer are those early mornings. Those mornings to go out and catch sunrise and make it to that destination for that awesome light, for that quiet of the morning, and just, it's a, you know, it's a great time. But while I don't consider myself not a morning person, I'm not really a 5 a.m. in the morning person. So I've put together a set of tips and strategies that I use to help me get from the time the alarm goes off to out the door so that I make it to my sunrise destination with being awake, caffeinated, and all my gear ready to go. So tip one, I make sure I have my camera bag packed, batteries charged for the camera, and all my memory cards prepped the night before. I make sure those all go into my camera bag, make sure the batteries, make sure they've got full charges, make sure my memory cards are good so I don't have to be worrying about deleting anything or prepping a card in the morning. It's all good to go and confirmed ready the night before. Pack the whole camera bag up, take my camera bag, set it by the door with the tripod attached. So I literally, all I have to do in the morning is pick up my bag and go because I know I packed it all the night before and I don't have to go looking around for anything, hunting for anything missing, or even remembering to grab a battery off the charger. It's ready to go the night before, makes for an easy exit the morning of. Tip number two is I make sure I have my food and snacks and water packed the night before as well. So I have a little container for my food. I have it all prepped. These are just little snacks for maybe on the drive or I'm just waiting for the sun to come up or maybe I'm hungry after all the excitement has passed of sunrise and I just want to be able to have something to eat before I get a real breakfast in. So I make sure to have all my food packed up in a little container. I prep my water bottles the night before. I get the ice in them, put them in the fridge so they stay cool. And if I'm taking any kind of snacks that require refrigeration, I have the snacks in the fridge right next to the water bottles and I have my cooler sitting on the counter so in the morning it's literally grab my little pack of food grab my water bottles throw anything in the cooler I need and it's super easy to do there's no prep I'm not making sandwiches the morning of I'm not doing any of that it's all been made the night before so I can just grab and go make it super easy Tip number three, I have to have a coffee plan. I love my coffee in the morning, I need my caffeine, and coffee is a key part of me getting out the door because I need it to get going. So if I'm at home, this is easy. I just set up the coffee pot, self timer, and it'll be ready to go by the time I get up. And I just pour it into my to-go mug and we're set. Now I also tend to one of my best photography investments ever that's not camera directly camera related, and that's a thermos. I've got this nice thermos, keep my coffee hot for really about eight to 12 hours. So that pot of coffee I make, I pour my travel mug, warm up my thermos, get the coffee in my thermos, and I'm good to go for that coffee to go. Makes it super easy. So that's my home trick. Just prep the coffee the night before, so programs and brews the next morning, pour it into my thermos, into my to-go cup, and I'm good to go out the door and on my way. Super easy. Now, if I'm traveling, this can get a little more difficult. If I'm staying in an Airbnb, this sounds silly to admit, but a lot of times I'll look and try to make sure they actually have a real coffee maker and not one of those single serve things. Because I like to hit the road with my thermos, so I need a full pot of coffee to go, not single cups here and there. So I sort of check that out and try to confirm either from the pictures or sometimes even emailing the host to find out that they have a coffee maker that's going to work. And then I really just do the same thing. If they don't have a self timer on it, cause sometimes these places have super simple ones, that's fine. Just get up and the first thing I do is hit brew and we're good to go. And my plan sort of works out no problem. If they're either only a single serve coffee maker or, you know, there's no coffee maker or say I'm in a hotel or this just really isn't a great option. A lot of times I'm leaving before any kind of hotel breakfast bar will be open. So sometimes I will scout out a fast food place, McDonald's open super early, and that can be a viable option. When I was in the Rockies, that's sort of what I did. I took off, went the first half hour of the drive, 45 minutes to drive without coffee, but there was a McDonald's, no drive through line at five in the morning. Just cruise through, get my coffee, I'm good to go. So I sort of have that scattered out as well to how I'm gonna caffeinate. Now, if I'm camping, I learned this one the hard way. If you're camping and you need to get up, set up the camp stove the morning of, that's just, it just doesn't work. It's super, I either end up not getting coffee or I end up being, oh, I'm not gonna make it to sunrise. So what I do and what has worked really well for me is I actually make my coffee the night before. So that night in camp, I'll set up my stove, I'll boil a pot of water, I'll warm up my thermos with it so it stays nice and hot, and then I'll make another pot of water with my coffee, I use a little percolator, fill up my thermos, bundle up nice and tight, put it in the forerunner, and then I have that ready to go the next morning. It's not the hottest of the hot coffee, but it'll definitely be called hot, definitely serves the need of getting me caffeine, and that's my trick for when I'm camping. But that's my coffee solutions. Tip number four is I lay all my clothes out the night before. I plan what I'm going to be wearing, put them in a stack. This includes socks, pants, shorts, shirts, extra layers, vests, fleece, 
shells, all of that stuff gets set out and put in a stack. My hat goes there. That is all laid out right there. And then I usually have a little smaller stack if I need extra layers. Maybe I think my feet might get wet or maybe I'm not 100% sure what it's gonna feel like in the morning. So I just want those extra layers that can go in the Forerunner with me. So I get that all gathered up, set it out. And in that way, all I have to do is get up in the morning, grab my clothes pile. I've already made all these planning and thinking. I, my mind doesn't even have to think. I just go grab, start putting on clothes and I'm good to go. I can, it makes it super fast to get out the door in the morning if you do all that prep the night before, as opposed to getting up in the morning, rummaging for the closet, wondering where your favorite vest is, your favorite jacket is. You already have it all set out, you solve those problems the night before, and you're good to go. And tip number five, and one that I sort of consider my secret weapon, is I shower the night before. I like to have my morning shower, but when I'm going out for sunrise, it just slows me down, it takes time. So what I do is I shower the night before. If it's gonna be cold the next morning, then I go ahead and put on my base layers right away. That way I really just have to wake up, put on my pants, put on my shirt, put on my jackets, and we're good to go. It just helps make that transition from warm, cozy bed to being out the door. Because if I don't do that stuff, I wake up, I don't feel great, I'm like, oh, I should have a shower. Or I wake up and I'm like, oh, you know, I gotta go get more clothes, I gotta do all this. Whereas if I already sort of went to bed with some of those base layers on, I can be laying there, alarm goes off, I'm like, well, I'm already partially dressed to go, I might as well go now. And it just helps cross that mental block of alarm going off and getting that first foot out of bed to start moving. So that's sort of my secret weapon shower the night before so you feel nice and clean in the morning and then if it's going to be cooler out and you need those base layers go ahead and put them on before you go to bed so that in the morning it's super easy to pop right up with that alarm so those are my five tips to help me get going in the morning i don't know about you but like i said i don't really mind the mornings but when the alarm goes off at five in the morning or 4 45 in the morning it can be just be really tough and really most of the battle is just mental because you're in there in that nice warm sleeping bag or bed and alarm goes off and your mind just doesn't wanna go. But if I've taken care of all of those, all the hard stuff's done, I'm really just grabbing things and going, everything's already been set out, I don't have to think and I can just move and go. So if I can just get my feet out of bed, it just sort of ticks off the list, I'm out the door and can make it out pretty quickly. So by removing those hurdles, those extra things to do, I find I'm much more successful at getting up at the time I wanted to get up in order to head out. So all the photography gear and tips and tricks and settings and equipment won't help you at sunrise if you can't get out to sunrise reliably. And the sunrise is just such a great time to photograph with the awesome light, the stillness. You know, you just don't want to miss those chances. So look at any opportunity you can to make those mornings just a little easier for you so you can do more of them and get more awesome photographs. So how about you? Do you have any tips that you use to get out the door in the morning? I'd love to hear about your tips down in the comments below. Maybe I'll pick something up. So if you liked today's video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you wanna see future landscape photography content from me, including tips, tricks, behind the scenes, mini gear reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any landscape photography content from me in the future. And thank you for watching.